Whoa! I just got What's the up, notification. Peeps? We are live. What's up? Hey, episode Trace here. Took us a while. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to understand elliptic curve cryptography. Yeah, who'd have like thought? A, in a couple episodes. Woo! Yeah. That thing. Boo! It yeah, was. we had to read the chapter several times and watch as many YouTube channels. <laughs> we probably we what, set like what like back and forth like six, seven, eight different videos, and I'd still say we don't. We know probably what thirty percent of it. Yeah, I think we it's... we got a gist of it to be able to kind of you know hash it out on this no pun intended uh, on this episode and give everyone a a basic understanding of yeah what's going so we're... on. So we're not going to explain ECC in depth. You know, we're going to, both of us are going to try to learn it from, you know, going forward. But my gosh, it, it is, it is a, uh, it's a whole different animal. It's a yep. beautiful thing, but it is, it's tough. It's a big thing to learn. Um, it is. I'm just checking our live stream right now to make sure the camera's switching. Let's see. Do we have, oh yeah, I want to see if we got any people watching this. There's zero viewers. Don't worry. It says it on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We're good. It's too late. We're good. It's just too late for everybody. We meant to do this three hours ago. Yeah, I said let's keep going like at ten fifteen. All right. Uh, let me make sure that the uh, fit camera switching real quick, people. I apologize, but yeah, don't we don't want episode malfunction of that one. Oh man, I'm hearing my own audio. It's tripping me out. Okay, so um, it looks like. Yeah, you want to? Where do I get the link for the show? Um, I can send it to you real quick. Yeah, send that to me. Yeah, it looks like my camera is switching. If I switch it uh, back and forth, okay. So now we can begin. Um, so we post this to the aquarium. Uh, crypto aquarium, yeah. guys. I didn't explain it. So you see my lower third right here. Uh, crypto aquarium, um, originally from Purdue. A couple of guys, um, Mr. Josh Petty. Um, and some other real smart guys. He he started a Cellaflora as his company. They're building an app called Coindex. Awesome. It's gonna be an awesome price tracker. They they've been working on the beta for a long time now. Um, but he started the crypto aquarium. It's on Telegram. Um, and we run it. We got like nine hundred members now. It's a beautiful thing. If you want to come in and just learn about it's a lot. We do trading talk, we do developer talk, we do mining talk, mm -hmm. anything you want. Um, a good place to go and just ask what is Bitcoin? You know, and we'll start throwing stuff at you. But it's um we just want to throw that out there. That's where that's our little lower third right there, crypto aquarium. That's where that's where I air from. Sweet. And uh yeah, I'd say check it out. I've uh, been in there for a couple of weeks and it's very informative and it's cool to be able to talk to a Act, bunch of like minded place. People. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess we, as we mentioned earlier, we're um, trying to cover, you know, mastering Bitcoin. Um, this is a, a book by Andreas Antonopoulos, and we're going through it chapter by chapter, trying to 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 digest it ourselves, learn it, and then kind of repeat it back to you and what we think we understand of it. Um, and then also any other um, resources that we use, videos or websites, articles, we'll include in the, the show notes below. Um, so that way you can read and watch exactly what uh, we, we've watched as well to learn all this. Um, and um, also highly recommend buying this book. Um, it's also available on GitHub if you want to read it that way. Uh, but definitely support Andreas um, as he is awesome. He has a ton of YouTube videos as well. Yeah. That I would Andreas is he is the man. Like, like everybody else in crypto, like in terms of explaining, he's like five levels above. Like he's, he's, he's talking to the Senate in Canada. You know, I mean, who else is... He's doing it right. Uh, oh yeah, Andreas, that was actually every yeah. every every episode. I'm gonna say, Andreas, you're the man. So. Yes, yes. No, I know. I've actually watched that Canadian Senate hearing, and I never thought I would ever watch one of those. Yeah, uh, Seath fan. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was actually pretty it was entertaining. Like the most, and, I mean, the guys were clapping. Yes. At the, at the end of it, like. Oh yeah. They were coming like, "What the hell is this Bitcoin thing?" And then, yeah. they were clapping, like only Andreas. Oh yeah, it it was very good. He's he's very quick. He's very witty. He's very, very very intelligent. So I'd highly recommend checking out his videos. And, I, and I'll say I I am a Patreon for Andreas because I, I believe in him that much. But still, oh, that's out cool. There. That's cool. Very cool. 
So we're jumping into chapter four today. Um, yeah, let's get started. Is the elliptic curve cryptography. Basically, it's chapter is called addresses and, and, and keys. Um, but the, the, the heart of it um, is the ECC uh, or elliptic curve cryptography that is used in Bitcoin um, to generate these, uh, the keys um, and, and what they are used for. Um, so essentially, you have a address, um, a wallet address uh, in Bitcoin that um, is derived from um, your, a public key, which is also derived from your private key. And your private key is actually what you secure and you save yourself and you write down on a piece of paper or you store in a bank vault or on a Trezor hardware wallet or... And it could know. be in a form of a seed. Yep, well. exactly. Yep, and, yeah, and so, so that, that private key is what... And it's just a number, right? It's a number between zero and two to the 250, well, maybe not exactly, but it's, yeah. just, a, it's just a number. It's all it's it is. It's a giant number. It's so a big, giant, it's a giant yeah. number. <laughs> Giant number um, that you that uh, you basically take the private key and then um, it's well. Let's get into the elliptic curve really because that, that'll explain it. Then and yeah, what, you want uh, you want to throw this. those slides and yeah, I'm just going to throw this up. Be, let me go ahead and share a little, screen. and we'll get to the point here. Oh, we got our first live watcher. It probably it's probably me. <laughs> oh, no, we got, we got three. Oh, nice, very cool. Hey guys, thanks, thanks for joining. Yeah. Our lonesome, our lonesome little duet. Share this and put it onto presentation mode. Present, presenter view. So, can you see this on your screen clearly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, live view is still coming up, but uh, I can see it. Online. Okay. So, here we go. This is basically the cover of the book. Just wanted to show that where we got most of these um, you know, screen grabs from, um, as well as a few other websites on the web. Um, and to kick it off, we have the, um, I think it's, hold on a second, I think I wasn't showing the screen share, so now, now we are. Um, and let me just make sure that we have the live chat going. Okay. Sorry, we're just trying to get it organized here. All right, so basically, um, Brian, you want to kick it off and, and explain you know, what you know and what you understand. I'm going to put the pressure on you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I so what are we looking at my here? My cheat sheet here. Let me get my cheat sheet. Hold on. Oh. Okay. So what are we looking at here? If you kind of explain the, the, the so, process yeah. of this chart. So first up, I'm going to use my handy-dandy cheat sheet brought, uh, brought to you by programmingblockchain.com. Uh, you got to go to the class get one of these. So you get your private key. So so every private key, it can be, you know, if you go to bitaddress.org, and if you haven't been there, I'd recommend going there. Um, it's a great tool to generate your own private keys for cold storage. So cold storage is just a paper wallet, uh, very secure. You know, if you don't can't afford a, a hard wallet, um, a hard wallet, a cold store, a cold store is like a, a ledger or a trezor. Yeah, he's pulling it up here. This is a way to do it cheap. So um, this is just a paper wallet. There's this way is secure, um, but if you you know it, it just it, on your, depends on your level of paranoia. Like so, what what you can do is this site is actually set up that you can if Rob I can show you this real quick. You just go to save save the web page. Like you know how you can go to um, just save like a HTML. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. So this will this is will actually download the whole it's made this way. It'll actually download the whole web page as the tool and you can save this to a USB. If you want to, you know, it just depends on what your level of security is. Put this into a computer that's, you know, you you never connected to the internet. If you can set that yep. up that way, your gap it, whatever. Um, pop this USB in and you can just you or you can download it from GitHub. There's no way to do it. And you can generate offline private keys with this with this um, site so yeah, and we're seeing it right now it's actually yeah. on my machine and I've just generated a a share code uh, which is our my public key or my public address yeah so generate address. generate some randomness um, and here's my private key, and this private key. So, so so the most important piece here obviously is your secret key and, and not because why you think I'm saying that 
the reason I'm saying that is because you don't have to know your public address to know all you have to know is your secret you know because well if you know your secret you can do some fancy math right here well can we go backwards and we can't know so see the black arrows go back to the slide okay so but you, so so we have the private key you see yep, here's a private key here we can, the we, can go, we can go to our public but you can see we cannot go back to our private see that there's the bigger um and that's the, the that's one of the, the main feature one of the main features of you know the discrete logarithm problem sounds smart here um <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah throw it out there um yep. but yeah see, so you, all you have to do is write down that private key which is that numbers and then some way or another you can always generate that public key your public address from that private key and so that's what that first slide was shown there so yeah so for example um i'll take a little further if we've got the secret here which was generated by um basically a random number generator on this page and that's why i was moving my mouse around because that was actually uh, introducing another, um, you know, uh, form of randomness, if you will, um, into this algorithm to generate this hexadecimal value, um, and it's all. You can also see it's a, it's more than just hexadecimal. It looks like it's been put into base fifty-eight uh, because it has more values than hexadecimal in there, and that's just another way guess, to make it. Yeah, just want to explain base fifty-eight real quick. What what mm -hmm. it is? Just go ahead. Oh, I well, for, okay. Oh, you want me to? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's what I figured. So yeah, base fifty eight is basically um, a way for um, a hex value, if you will, um, to be converted into a more human friendly, um, you know, alphabet. To, so that way we can easily, you know, it's less it's less error prone. So you you're, less error prone. Yes. Your ones, you're, there's no zeros. You'll see there's no O's. You know, you don't no see O's or zeros. There's no L's, lowercase L's that can be confused for ones. Um, yeah, so it's an error, error prone, error proof way to just, you just so you're not making stupid mistakes. It take, it takes out with those certain characters, like you were saying. Exactly, exactly. So this is just like a compressed error prone or less error prone uh, version of our private key, and this is basically the part that you don't want anyone to see or give to anyone, and to store very, very securely because this is the only thing that prevents anyone from accessing uh, your phones in your Bitcoin wallet. That are and that and that and then I guess is that for not for the computer tech guys here, savvy guys. But that, even though it's text, that is a number, right? Can yes. you just talk to hex? It. Can you do? I think we can yes. take that just to a, an int. We can show them show them just unhexify that. Or, well, it's, it's 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 base fifty eight. Yeah, I I'm not or sure. Or I guess if you yeah, 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 that, yeah, 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 that's fine. So, but really, that's a number, huge number. It's just shown in a different way. Yes, exactly. It's just easier to store this uh, value than it is to store the much longer version yeah. of the key. Um, so basically looking at the slide here, we have that private key, which I just showed you here. This is the private key. Yep. It, and this slide keeps changing on me. That is the lowercase k. And then using elliptic curve multiplication, which we'll show you in a minute what that means, you can then determine what your public key is. And then from that public key value, again, just a number, we can then go through some hashing functions um, that will then output your Bitcoin address uh, A. Um, so you can see that this process is a one-way process. We generate a random number, completely random. We take that number, run it through elliptic curve multiplication. We get the public key, which is um, publicly shareable. It's safe to share this value because it cannot be reversed back to your private key. Um, almost impossible. It's just computationally unrealistic. Um, and we'll get into that more. Um, uh, sorry, my scroll wheel is scrolling through these. So basically to get into, um, go back into the slide, after we get the public key, rehash it to get the Bitcoin address, which is right here. This is the shared um, Bitcoin address that we would say, hey, Brian, go ahead and send $10 worth of Bitcoin to this address, and I would be able to access those funds by using this key. Mm -hmm. um, so and just, you uh, know, every every public address starts with a one, um, mm -hmm. unless it's a multi-sig, which starts with a three, or if you, get, if you guys upgraded your, your, uh, to a SegWit wallet, which is um, easily do with a Trezor or a... Um, uh, my Ledger Nano S. If you go through that process, um, I think who's who's our guy we watch a lot. Um, 
um, not Ivan. Well, I like to uh, BTC Sessions. He does a, a nice tutorials to how to how to upgrade your walls to a, a segwit wallet, which starts from the three, and your your transaction fees go lower. But I just wanted to plug that in there real quick. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. So so if we go here, uh, basically this is the process, and and obviously it cannot be reversed, and we're going to show you why um, that is. So. First, uh, we need to kind of define what an elliptic curve is. Um, um, so, Bitcoin uses an elliptic curve that's that is called the SEC P two fifty six K one curve, and that is defined by this uh, you know this formula here: y squared equals x cubed plus seven over um, the field of P. Um, is that the correct way to say it? The field of P. Yeah, yeah, the field, yeah. The field of primes. That, that, that's yeah, like a big old clock that. Or if you know what modulus is, look at mod, um, mm -hmm. or clock, clock math, or um, but yeah. There's there's certain numbers that will like a, let's say if it was a field of twelve, like a clock, that's saying you're only going to be able to work with numbers between one and twelve, and then once you go over say fourteen, that actually is two. You know, four, yeah, 12, it rolls one, over. Two. It just it just so and that's field of prime. It's a huge number, but it's just saying it's and I think it actually does that maybe because because a computer can't contain every single point on the curve so you yes yep that might not be right yeah no no that's that is correct um so basically what we're seeing here is this is what that curve would look like if you were to graph it out um now and that is course, set by the and it's set by the nsa <laughs> yeah exactly this is something that was defined <laughs> by the nsa yeah yeah um so so um this curve here um you can see here it's got this unique this unique shape and and basically what this allows um, is you to pick a point on this curve um, let's say um, we pick this point here we're able to then go from there from this point point G and then do what's called point addition or point multiplication uh, or both to determine a new point so say if I were to multiply G by itself we would go we would draw a line straight across here to this point and then we would reflect that point on the x-axis uh, so we are reflecting it um, exactly here and that would give us a new point um, and just and then, real quick Rob what are like give us a little basis on this like so this is this is this is showing you how yeah I guess what is this showing us just real quick this is just showing us point addition yeah it's showing us point us. addition Mm -hmm. So if we were to take G and add it to itself, we would get this result, which is 2G, as okay. you can see here. And, and the amount of times we flip is our private key, right? Exactly. We'll, we'll exactly. Yeah. Yep. So then if I wanted to multiply it again, I would get 4G here. Multiply it again, I would then get 8G, because it would be 8 times G, because I'd yeah, be you, doing it. you do this point addition, which is just some... I guess not arbitrary, but it's not... When you say addition, it's not addition. It's... Yes, it's elliptic curve addition. It just says, "Hey, it's just it's this, this thing where you yeah. add this, 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 and you can get two points in the line, make a third point, and then flipping across the axis is just changing it, changing the the y coordinate, exactly. right? Because it's, it's 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 symmetrical across the the x. Um, but yeah, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, no, that's perfect. Um, yeah, so basically, addition is not taking the x and y value of g and just doubling them. Um, in this case, it's actually um, doing something that is called addition, but it is a different form of addition. It's where you uh, draw this line and then you reflect it across the x-axis, and they just call that point addition, or in this case, point doubling. Um, so just to kind of show like a little animation, you can see if we were to start with a, nice. we, we would get c. If we then go on and so so on and so forth. You can kind of see how the lines of the dot moves across, and that's actually the process of the point multiplication um, that is happening uh, in that formula that I showed you a few slides back here. Yeah, and, and um, just no, I apologize. Uh, yeah, 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 no, you're, no, you're, no, you're fine. Curve. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. And so, just so I, I hope this is right. We've been trying to learn this stuff. Yeah, the, the reason why. <laughs> So your private key is is the number of times that thing does that dotted line. So, yes. so, you know, this thing can keep going and going and going and going, and, and it's not there's no pattern to the way it's going to hit that curve, and it looks like it maybe it might like come to the center, but it doesn't. It'll just keep jumping around, jumping around, jumping around, and that is what your private key does. You know, so your private key is the number. Okay, what at what point do we stop? You know. And, and it does it a quintillion and so many millions of times, 
trillions. I apologize if we get any really technical people out here. Those are gonna be like, yeah, these guys. But you know, <laughs> this stuff is so hard to explain for people that don't get it. So I'm, I'm, or I'm gonna build a little pretty bridge to get there. But yes. that's that's kind of the idea. This thing is gonna jump around and see. That's that's kind of where the secret's hidden is how many times do I jump around, jump across this and by doing this procedure. But yeah. Yes. Yes. So for example, uh, look at what Brian is saying. Say we started at a. Um, which we'll call the generator point, which is actually a point within Bitcoin um, that all of keys are, are uh, multiplied against. Um, and it starts at A, and, and we pick a public or a private key of the number four, um, which is extremely unlikely and, and not secure at all. I mean, it, usually private keys are gigantic numbers that, um, that uh, you know, unfathomably, unfathomably large uh, numbers. So say we just simplify it down to four, then we would then do this point multiplication and this dotting, you know, four times. And then wherever this ball ends up on the fourth addition uh, or multiplication, say it ends up here, that that uh, point on this graph or on this curve, it becomes your public key. The X and Y values are actually uh, translated into your public key value, which then is is converted into a Bitcoin address. Do a little math. Do a little. Yep. and then you can get your public address. But yeah, the number yes. 50 flip is your private. So that's what's yeah, so hard to figure out. Exactly. And so since this graph is actually over real numbers um, and computers can't really compute infinitely large numbers very easily, we have to um, do this elliptic or graph this curve over a, um, over a, what do we call it, a field? A prime field, yeah. Yeah, prime field over basically a range or a limited set of uh, numbers. Yeah. You're um, only allowed to work with zero between a trillion. And yes, once exactly. you go over a trillion, you're like the asteroids game, right? Yeah, and, 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 and it boo, and it comes back exactly. Up. Yep. So it's 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 boo. like the and that's where the modulo math uh, and and the clock math, if you will, <laughs> comes in uh, play. Um, and what Bitcoin actually does is have a prime field of uh, two to the 256 uh, power. Um, and it's still an extremely large number that we can't even comprehend. Um, can't even comprehend. We're you think going you can, to, but you can't. <laughs> we're going to go into it's that so big. <laughs> so this is an example of a elliptic curve, uh, similar to the one we just saw before, but the points are graphed on uh, whole, whole numbers, whole integers, which that's what Bitcoin uses. It does not use any decimal values. Um, oh, and this is over a field of 17, prime field of 17. So this is just a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny version of an elliptic curve um, graph that Bitcoin would use. Um, and the reason you'll, you'll see that the points are kind of um, scattered about um, and don't really follow the, the shape of this curve here is because of that uh, wraparound effect. So when, when a value, an XY value is greater than 17 uh, on other axis, it wraps around and goes to the opposite end to be graphed. Um, and that limits or sets a maximum that um, range that these points can be graphed on, um, which is convenient because computer memory isn't infinite, processing power isn't infinite, and if we put a, a limit on you know, what, where these points can be graphed, it's a lot easier for the computer and more efficient for the computer to calculate. Um, so showing an example of what, again, uh, a graph, uh, imagine there, this is the um, x and y axis here. You'll see these blue points are graphed on this, uh, this chart here. And you'll notice it's still symmetrical. I mean, there's two dots here, two dots here. These dots are symmetrical. You can almost make out the shape of you know, that part of the elliptic curve. But then the rest of them seem to be almost random, but they aren't. They're, they're actually just being wrapped around from being in this limited range of uh, you know of the prime field, um, so if we were to to then draw some lines from point to points on on this graph, we'll doing actually our, po our point addition. Yep, doing our point addition, you'll Here's actually our see this asteroids game. Yep, you'll see the animation here. I'll move my mouse so you can watch it a few times. But this is drawing a line from point A to B through B to uh, to determine what C will be. So you'll, let's hop back to that animation earlier, just to yes, so they know what this, what the hell that thing is. <laughs> so the, the A to B to C is exactly this right here, A to B to C. So it, it looks very um, simple here because you're seeing the curve, 
that the line and the dot is being drawn on, but when we put it over a field, you cannot easily see the curve, but you can kind of see it's doing the same thing. Um, you'll see from, when we go from A to B, once we hit the top, we have to come out in the exact opposite place of the graph at the bottom and then go continue to go up until we hit another point. Once we hit this right side here, we have to jump all the way to the opposite side of the graph and continue drawing our line, uh, which we hit here. So we finally hit a point and then we do a dotting, which is called dotting, down to the next uh, point, which would be the reflection of this point. Changing your y, y, y to a negative. Or exactly. Positive. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So if it was positive, it goes negative. If it ends up hitting one of the negative points, it, it jumps up to the positive version of that point. Um, and that's why this sim uh, symmetry is important. All the points up here are reflected down here. Mm -hmm. So that way, when we do that point dotting, we're able to easily flip from one to another. Um, and basically, this, kind of, this slide kind of drives the point of, it's kind of like a game of asteroids. You've got your ship here in the middle, and you've got your little bullet and when you shoot it at the asteroid and you miss, the bullet will continue, hit the edge, and then come out the complete opposite end of the, of the, uh, uh, the map or the world, and then continue to fly until it finally hits an asteroid. <laughs> well, you had uh, to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few articles referenced asteroids, and it, made, it just made, it, made sense to us. It's yeah. like when we're graphing, when we're doing the point multiplication, if, if we hit the edge, we just go to the other side and continue. Um, so basically, the field that the, the Bitcoin's elliptic curve is defined over, drawn Quint over. Quintillion? Is that quintillion? Uh, Let's something. see. Thousands? Millions? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Millions, trillions. I give so up. <laughs> the value is, is equivalent to 2 to the 256th power. Um, so that means that there can be this many... Bitcoin private keys, which would mean there could be this many Bitcoin addresses that you can send to. Unless um, I, I, I remember this, um, that is equivalent to ten to the seventy seventh power. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and what there is, ten to the eightieth atoms yes. in the universe. Yep. Just to so just just just, just, just a little slightly. shy, just a little, little shy. shy number of atoms in the universe. So you got to think about this. I mean, the, the atoms are not <laughs> just the solid pieces. We're talking about the gases, you know, the, everything. We're talking about everything you see in front of you, the Earth. The, the Andromeda. System, the galaxies. Yes, the, the galaxy clusters, every single star, so planet. So that's, that's why, so when you, when you generate a private address, it's not like it's double-checking that, oh, this one key, yeah. hasn't been used yet. Or this one, it just... It'll, anyone can generate, and it's it, it just the statistics and the, the probability of you generating another private key is so unlikely that you can sit here and flip through just a million, and, and these numbers will never be seen again. Yes, know? so when I click this button. These, um, these, it's the first time this number has ever come into existence, and it's going to disappear. Yep, and this number here is completely unique, and completely, if I click this button, we'll probably unique. never see it again. And, yeah, and no yeah, one it, may ever generate that address again. Very, yeah. there's very no double checking. Yeah, and I'm, we're stealing this from our guy. We'll post the, the episode yes. in the um, in the comments. Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, there's a brilliant way of explaining this, but yeah. But, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he shows the same example. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely give credit where credit is due. <laughs> we've, we've, we've stolen yeah. many of these images, animations from other websites that, and uh, videos, and we're definitely including those in our our comments as well uh, so they get their credit um, so check out those videos as well um, they do an excellent job in explaining this uh, much better than we do but we're trying to collect all that information and learn from it and uh, hopefully point you guys in the right direction um, stuff is not easy <laughs> yes not at all but this is coming to like the most really it's only episode three chapter four of the book and i would say it's probably the most difficult to understand and it's the most mind-blowing part of Bitcoin. I mean, there are definitely some complexities coming, but as far as uh, you know, understanding the security of Bitcoin, this is it. I mean, this is what is creating uh, the security behind your private key. Yeah, and asteroids. <laughs> and this giant number. Um, so just to give another example from another video, um, if you wanted to, let's say, in this you case- Do you remember this? Yes. Yes. Do you want to go on and give it a shot? Do you want to give it a shot? 
Oh, no, Dylan. Oh, losing Brian. <laughs> of course. All right, well, Brian will join back in. Um, so basically what this is, is showing us is how many um, billions upon billions and billions of uh, hashes it would take to determine or to guess what one of the two to the 256 uh, power numbers are. Um, so if we were to go back to this number here, I apologize, right here. If we were to take this number here and we were to have uh, four billion, or basically four billion computers that can do um, four billion hashes a second. So actually, no, it's just one computer doing four billion hashes per second. And then we were to take that computer and put it in a data center and we put um, four billion of those computers in a data center and then we built four billion of those data centers and then we duplicated earth with those four billion data centers in it and here's brian again and we took that earth and we um took uh four billion copies of the that galaxy with the four billion earths in it and, and then with continue the universe, on universe right or galaxy universe yeah um and times it again by another four billion we would have, um, if we take 4 billion seconds, which is 126 years, and you times that by 4 billion, you get roughly 507 billion years, or 37 times the age of the universe. So that's what, how large or how difficult it would be to guess one of these numbers that are in this range. And have a correctly. 1 in 4 billion chance and of still guessing. Having, yes, that's the biggest point. So even if you were <laughs> to be able to build all these billions and billions of computers and kilogoogles as they call them, <laughs> data centers, four billion Earths, four billion galaxies, four billion, you know, uh, superclusters, galaxy superclusters, you would still only have one in four billion chance of success in guessing and, the number that was yeah, picked. And I guess, in this and we gotta give credit where credit's due on that one too, Yep. right? Uh, three blue, one brown? Was three blue, one brown, if that guy, if you if you want if you like math, that guy is your man. Three blue one brown. I'll give you credit to you. You get you make some incredible mathematical videos. But this he is one he does on Bitcoin, and it's oh, yeah. one of the best. Yep, and we'll have his link uh, below shortly uh, or after when the video is done. Um, so basically, once we um, to go back on this slide here, this is just kind of explaining uh, what a Bitcoin address is. Um, which in this case, you know, first we get the private key which is just a number that's randomly picked by the computer or yourself. You can even flip a coin, what, 256 times? Um, and I and want to do that for a future episode. I want to show you guys how you can make your own private keys by flipping a coin, writing down one heads, zero tails, one heads, one heads, 256 times. We'll give you the math, give you the tools, and then you can generate your own private key and public key address. Uh, oh, yeah. For a future episode. No, we're definitely going to do that. We're going to start now. So get out a coin. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, now, really, uh, basically, you take the private not the key, as we explained earlier, and I'm just going to keep going back and forth to, to get to knock this point home, uh, which we really didn't exactly cover the math that's involved. So um, this is the formula for the, uh, the elliptic curve that Bitcoin uses. That um, is the curve. The that curve. is the curve. Um, this is the point multiplication or the point addition. Um, that we perform on a certain point called the generator point. So let's just say that this point here, G, is the generator point. This is actually an X and Y value that all and Bitcoin that's address standard. is a standard that is built into every Bitcoin library, every you know wallet, you know key generator, whatever you want to call it. Um, they have to have this exact value in here. This is a value that was picked um, that allows the point addition and multiplication to work in a way that when um, that point is added to itself, private key number of times, notice I said that because the private key is the number that we randomly generate, like right here. This can actually be converted into a decimal number that we can understand as a human. We can take that number and nice. then add G to itself that many times, that number of times, which honestly is, again, un fathomably large number of times, but the computer can do this very quickly. 
And after it is done calculating all this, the point that it ends up landing on will be on this curve, you know, magically enough. Um, and wherever it's that why when, you, when you load up a Jack's wallet, it says, hold tight, we're doing a very uh, computer intensive process. <laughs> it's possible if it's generating new addresses. It's and, yeah. I mean, and a lot of wallets do generate new addresses for every transaction. I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the security of Bitcoin that you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to, and you shouldn't use the same address for every time you send Bitcoin um, because you don't have to. There are so many addresses available that you can actually, you know, uh, be less traceable. <laughs> that's the best way I can say it. Um, uh, if you use a new address for every transaction. Um, but once you land on one of these points here, that point is your public key. It just has to go through a few more algorithms to be converted into a, a nice and friendly, you know, base 58 ed as we call it, um, Bitcoin address. Yeah. But this is actually a number. And this number was actually derived from a point, an X and Y coordinate that landed, uh, that was landed on, on this curve by multiplying this point by the number of times this number equals. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I. We did that. Hey, just side note. I don't think the camera's flipping when I talk, but I'm, no I'm only keeping it on the uh, um, screen share. That's perfect. Yep. Just want to make yep. it better. Yep. Okay. Yep. So what's, then what's, I'll direct what's it to the... our faces when we want to show something else. <laughs> so, but yeah, thank you. Show my face. I get it. But... You know, you, you're you're the only face that's showing up. I'm I'm hidden, <laughs> so you can you're getting all the attention now. Um, so yeah, I hope we drove that point clearly because it's very yeah, difficult. I, to I think we did. It's yeah, and we 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 probably oversimplified it like yeah. extremely. And we but, have to. It's YouTube. But you have to because, <laughs> like, if you want to get here, like YouTube and and all the resources will get you here, and then you know a year's worth of doing that again will get you here. <laughs> you know, yes. it's it, it's some tough, tough stuff to learn. Um, this is just the amount of data that we or the amount of information that we were able to understand in one week, reading the chapter and mastering Bitcoin and watching several videos and reading several articles and talking to, you know, a few people to confirm what we thought we knew. Um, so just what then the point of leaving this yeah. animation right here is really to show you, this is just what is happening. I mean, the computer computes adding, multiplying this point over and over and over again until it lands. And until then, it makes your bank account number. Yep. Right. Exactly. It creates your bank account number from the private key. Now the reason, we're able to do this is because what the discrete logarithm problem. You want to explain what that means? I mean, yeah, the I, I why think we can't. The entirety, yeah, I mean, discrete yeah. logarithm problem is is just it's like it's in in RSA. It's in um, different types of cryptography, but it just means it's a it's a one way function. Yes, right, exactly. In, in, not to get into too much detail, but it's it's that's the name for something that's hard to do the other way or trapdoor. Yes, exactly. But, and so, w again, picking the private key, random number, we go through, get a public key, which this magic that's happening here is using that curve to do that multiplication. We get the public key, run it through some hashing functions, which isn't changing the public key. It's just hashing it, making it more compact, just, yeah. and getting the yeah. digital signature of that public key so it's easily... Yeah. The same easily information is carried on that second part. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's just how you it's want to look at it. But getting back to this private key, we got to drive this point home, is nearly impossible. Uh, you know, as we covered through this, these um, this slide yeah, here. I think. Yeah, yeah I think we proved this point. Yep, yeah, exactly. No, we didn't. We're gonna go through it all all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, so step I think one. we've done this already. <laughs> so step one, <laughs> we take a private yeah, key. Yeah. No, oh, let's start all over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, basically, once you get your public key, um, this this little picture shows us that we're, we're that it goes through a few um, hashing algorithms uh, to get sing the SHA two fifty six signature. Then runs it through the ripe MD one sixty algorithm. It, then you have your public key. Well, it does SHA twice, right? It does. Yes. Does these two SHAs yeah. are twice? Well, yeah. Little little, te little technical. Exactly. Double double hash, as it's called, or hash one sixty. So it runs it through these hashing algorithms. You get your public key hash. You run it through another base, what's called the base 58 check in code, um, which we'll break down in a future episode probably. Um, and then you get your Bitcoin address. So this all comes from your public key, which came from your private now, key. Are we going to be able to do this, Rob? Or 
we can we can show some examples um, in Python to break it down. Um, okay. uh, so what I'll do, what do is here. switch my screen here. We break it down. We're gonna try to break it down. And Rob, okay. we are already thirty-eight minutes in. I can't believe that this time. Flies. That's awesome. That's cool. Wow, we bored people for thirty-eight minutes. That is yeah, amazing. He, I, I, I I congratulate the four people. Well, two people that are watching right now. Yeah. It's like well, you got to be late. five. It says five. It's late. Uh, so. It's late. But yeah, this yeah. is this is you got to be a techie or a nerd to like this stuff. So yeah, and really, <laughs> we're doing this live just to kind of put a point. We could have produced this and recorded this and edited this and done all this and polished this up, but we do this live really because it's it's well for time because to be able to produce a video that uh, covers all this and you know, and has all the appropriate animations and all that, which just take a long time for us. And yeah, no, no time for that. Let's just no. let's just do it. Just that's do it. Just, that's just, why we just do it. Just, so, just like do said, it. <laughs> so like we said, there's going to be links to videos and articles, and that's where you're going to do most of your understanding of this. We're just kind of pointing you in the right direction. So um, that being said, I'm going to load up um, uh, Python here. And I'm just going to show some quick examples here of what the process is of generating a key and all that. So um, first, I'm just going to do some some imports. I'm not going to get into the Python syntax and what exactly I'm doing, but this is just so this is the tools. this is this is Vitalik's. Yes, is his library or his um, his tool. Yes, yeah. Vitalik made this. Vitalik uh, Buterin. Yeah, uh, he created that, five that Bitcoin guy? tools. That guy, he, I think he, I think he's, he's not into Bitcoin anymore. He's like into something. Yeah, else. this was, this is when he decided, like, hey guys, we should do this. We should make this turning a plate. He's like, eh, eh, go away, Vitalik. He's like, fine guys, I'm gonna go make my own thing. Ethereum, yeah. right? <laughs> Never heard of it. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely look into Ethereum. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but basically, we we import some tools. I uh, then I'm going to create some code here that's going to generate a uh, private key, okay? So first we say, hey, valid private key is false. And then we're gonna create a loop. It says, hey, while the valid private key is false, go ahead and generate a new random key using the Pi Bitcoin tools, assign it to private key, and then also um, decode that private key and check if it's valid. And if it's less than a certain number, which is that. So I guess if, if they wanna follow along and I guess did you explain how to get to this point? Um, yep. Or is that is that? Yeah. Just, just what do they got to install? To, to, to follow along. Yeah, yeah. If they want to do this on their computer. Sorry, yes. I'm not the, I'm not the techie Cody guy here. No, that's okay. They, they, they can go home and what they got to do to. Oh, I just want to want to follow up. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to try this out, you definitely need Python two or three. Um, I'm running this in two just because it seemed to work uh, a little cleaner in two point seven. Um, you'll also need to install the Pi Bitcoin tools, um, and okay. there's a tool called PIP, which will help you install that. Um, I can provide some links to point you towards getting all that installed. Um, but basically, what what this function or this loop did was generate a random key and made sure that the key was valid by checking that it was greater than zero, but it was also less than this number here, and this number there is right here. As you can see, there's a giant 1157920 number um, that I believe that's the same number that we uh, have in our slide. It's 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 up there. It's it's definitely very close. I'm looking at it right now, and it looks like it's very close. So the key has to be anywhere from zero to this large number right here. Uh, so many okay. many possibilities. There's a few. Um, so now, if I wanted to just print out what the um, hexadecimal format of the private key that I generated. It's right here. Um, and that's the hexadecimal format. If I want to print out the decimal format, it's yep. right here. So it's actually a number, 70, 781 blankies, 093s, 750s, <laughs> something, something, something. Yeah. yeah. So that number is going to be used to then calculate um, the public key by multiplying this, doing electric curve multiplication against the generator point G. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here to show the next piece on my other screen here. I'll just keep following this along so that way we, we don't actually break anything. 
So now we're going to convert this uh, private key into a, a, a friendly WIF format, uh, which you can see takes this, you know, hex decimal number here and crunches it down further. Now WIF, to, now wallet WIF. import format. There you go. So, so it all un universal language, yeah, WIF. Yep. But um, using base it's a universal language for for the for all wallets. You want to build a wallet? Yes, and you can see it's using base fifty eight. So it removed all zeros. It only uses lowercase o's, I believe, it has ones or are no lowercase l's in there, um, which is a lot easier and friendlier to read than this hexadecimal, you know, version of the key. So this is just another yes. format of this key. Yep. Uh, so now we're going to add a suffix zero one to indicate that this is a compressed private key. Um, so it added the. So we add, we added that to the end. We had, to the end. just took that. And Yep, and 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 the compressed private key basically allows it to be, you know, a smaller, you know, shorter, you know, uh, the private key itself Compre isn't shorter. But the should we say compressed compressed version of it? It, it wouldn't be the compressed version because zero one, um, you don't actually compress the private key. You're compressing the public key. Um, but this is showing you that hey, this key points to a public or a public wallet address that has been compressed. If that makes sense, so the private key can't be compressed because the private key is really just a number. Um, but I guess yeah, it can be. Um, so then we're going to generate a new uh, this code here. Sorry if I pasting this too quickly. This will generate a WIF format, a wallet import format from the compressed private key that we just created right here. So this code goes and creates a private key that's been WIF compressed, and we get that number here. Um, so then we will continue on and then multiply the elliptic curve generator point G, which we showed you in our earlier you know, slide, the point on that curve, that little funny looking curve. We're going to multiply that with itself, this number. Of but the NSA, NSA standard G point? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if the NSA created that, did they? Or is it just SHA-256? They decide. Oh, we said the generator point is yeah. Yeah, is yeah. suggested exactly. by the NSA. Oh, okay. So yeah. So basically, this is going to take the generator point G, and then multiply it by the private key to get the new public key point. And when we say point, it literally means a new point on that elliptic curve graph that we showed you earlier. So this code here is just going to go ahead and do that, and you'll see it comes up with the x and y coordinates. Wow. Math. Uh, yep. So we took the generator point, which I can show you right here. Generator point actually is an X and Y value, just like in high school math or whatever school math you want to say. This is an X value, and this is a Y value. So if you took this and you had a graph large enough, you could plot that point by the X and Y value. But this value is always the same. This is built into th these Bitcoin tools, and everybody uses the same generator point. Um, and it's important that you use the same one or your keys and your addresses won't work and you lose your money. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when writing My code, already lost. <laughs> yeah, you know, when not writing any code, make sure you're using the generator point that has been provided. Um, so Oh, we get some comments we, here. Oh, we're doing. What do we got? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey just got here. Hi, I hope I haven't missed much. That would be great. <laughs> and those value. And that value is always on that curve. All right. Well, well I'll, I'll watch. I'll watch the chat now. I don't know if he's if okay. that was recent, but not. But. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I can reiterate. MT, MT, here. MTG cash cow. Yep. What's up, buddy? So, Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thank you. So the generator point is always on the curve. Yes. The the x and y coordinates for the public key are always on the curve, and we ensure that by you know basically following the formula uh, to multiply g by the private key. As long as that private key um, uh, it falls within a certain value, uh, range of values, the resulting coordinate should always be on the curve. So um, now we'll continue here with another bit of code. This is going to encode this value. Um, I'm sorry, this value, our public key point, as hex, and add a prefix, prefix of 04. You remember what the 04 was, Brian? The 04 is uncompressed. Okay, so it's going to be the uncompressed version um, of the public key. So you'll see this is a very large number. Uh, but you can also see 
well, it's actually hexified, so I can't see these hex and y, x and y coordinates in there, but these x and y coordinates we see right here are actually encoded in here. So we have 04, which tells us it's an uncompressed key, which means it's just a lot longer than a compressed key is. And it's um, just x and y concatenated together, yep, right? Exactly. So it's literally just taking x and y, putting them next to each other, so it's just one long number, adding or hex, converting it into hexadecimal, and then adding 04 to it, and that's your public key hex. Um, so now if we want to compress that public key, we can run this code here, compress public key, and adjust the prefix, because 04 isn't valid if we compress it. And it depends if, it's, if Y is even or odd. So in this case, this code actually checks the public key and checks its Y to see if it's even. If it is, then set the compressed prefix to 02 instead of 04 because we're compressing it and it's even. The Y coordinate is even. So if it turns out that the Y coordinate is odd, then we're going to set the compressed prefix to 03 instead of 04. Um, so we're going to go ahead. It looks like we got invalid syntax. Um, so let me see where that was. Hex encoded public key. Oh, yeah, because I need to do this. Let me just paste this back in there. Let's just ignore the man behind the curtain. And now we should get the public key hex with, that is not the compressed version. Oh, here we go. Oh, I just noticed that part Come of this on, code. No, I just noticed part of this code is copied twice, so just ignore that. I have to run this part. There we go. There is the compressed public key. Beautiful. Notice it's a Look lot at less. Look at that. Long. It's probably half as long. And it's odd, too. Yep. So Y happened to be odd, so it used the prefix of 03. And you'll notice it's about half the size because it actually dropped the Y coordinate of this point to create this compressed public key. Because according to the math, we don't need the Y coordinate to determine. Yeah, you can see right there. Look at the, get rid of the 0, 4, right, like five lines up. D0539. Yep. D0539. Yep, D0539, D0539. So compressed is really just trimming it, right? It's just trimming the Y coordinate off because we can always figure out what the Y coordinate is um, yeah. by knowing the X coordinate and if Y was even or odd. Um, so that's why that 0, 3 and 0, 2. Oh, things there. okay. Yep, that's I the indicator. So now we know to put a negative sign in front of it. Um, oh, oh, sorry, no. I get it now. I get it now. Yep. So the, the 0, 3 is telling you about the Y coordinate. Yes. Yep. And it's telling you if it was odd or even. Or not odd, negative or positive. Um, it's even or odd. Or, I, I misspoke. Yeah, sorry. Not uh, negative or positive. Okay, yeah. I don't get it anymore. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to generate now a Bitcoin address. Ignore that this says Pi Bitcoin tools. We're going to generate a Bitcoin address from the public key. So now that we have this, this shortened version of the public key, we can then take that and turn uh, run it through a base 58 um, hash algorithm, which shortens it even more. But in this case, it, 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 it's still the public key. Is just been hashed. Hey, hey, hey! Do a length on that. Is that thirty-four? Is that a is that a Bitcoin address? It should be. So let's go ahead and do length of. It's a string too, right? Oh, sorry. Let's just do a length of this guy. Yeah, it's a string. So I got to do that. Put it in quotes. Length is thirty-four. <laughs> So, we made a public a public address. Yeah, we did. With the the help of uh, the the code was actually um, sampled from Vitalik. No, well, he wrote the library, the the Pi Bitcoin tools, so the functions that are being used. But the code that we actually used was from the book Mastering Bitcoin. Um, but it's very simple. Um, it looks more complex here just because it's not neatly formatted and all. But um, we have generated a public uh, Bitcoin address with the uh, what is it, the prefix of one? Which, do you remember that was? Yeah. Uh, the prefix of one is just any Bitcoin address. Yeah, yes. Now, okay, I want to do this too. Well, I want to, oh, shit, phone's dead. 
Um, I was going to send money to it. We're going to see it on the blockchain, and then, and then whoever was out there watching, I was going to put into it. If you're watching, if you've paid attention, what's going on? Yep. You saw the secret, and you can figure this shit out. I'm going to give you ten bucks. So, um, while you're doing that, paste that paste that public address into the into our chat, and we'll call. And I'm and while we're talking here, if you guys are paying attention, and you have to figure out what's going on, I'm going to put. You know, I'm gonna put twenty bucks. All right, I'm gonna put twenty dollars in there. You guys can figure this out. It's free money. All right, and you can take it out. So, yep. while Rob, okay. you're gonna keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load some money in that address. Okay. Yep. No, that's actually the the end of that example. Let me just go ahead and. Sh um, so the secret's up there, so they can figure. I guess a little hint. They right? can. They can rewind. I'm not going back there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. If you can find it through all that garbage, then. You get the money. We'll see if anybody's uh, actually paying attention to us. Yeah, but we also have a compressed B58 check version of that Bitcoin address. Um, and you'll notice it's slightly longer. And I think this is what the preferred um, version of Bitcoin addresses would be. So it's kind of funny that the you think you know this would be shorter since it's compressed than this address here. But look, we'll take the length of this address here. And it's actually 34. It's the same. So why would that be a compressed version of this key uh, or of this address? Well, it's actually talking about the um, the public key uh, point, uh, the x and y coordinates earlier that we showed you. Uh, right about here, x and y coordinates. It's it's talking about if if it's actually using just the x coordinate alone to generate the um, the address. Um, or if it's using the X and Y. So the the older method uh, was using the X and Y to generate um, this public key hex here that was very long and unruly. Um, and then the newer version, uh, which is the compressed key, is further down here. As you can see, the compressed public key is right here. So that's what that um, compressed um, address means. It's pointing at this compressed address versus much larger compressed uh, or this public key versus the much larger public key earlier on. Um, so I believe um, we're going to want to send the money to this address here, the second address, the compressed Bitcoin address. Okay. Oh yeah, my phone's loading up, so it's okay. So I'm going to send you the new address. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't sent, the, I haven't sent, I haven't sent the money yet. Send me. That's fine. I just want to let you know the address. The address um, that people will want to keep an eye on, and uh, if you can. And then find the private key. The secret was in the video. Okay. The secret was printed up there. I, I will make everyone rewind and, <laughs> and find it. So and, it, and maybe we'll, well, well I, I'm sure that they'll find it, but I mean, I don't want to give them hit. Yeah. Never mind. You're, yeah. I think I've left it on the screen long enough. Do you think so? I can stop it. Let's go ahead. Uh, if you send me the key, yeah, you're good. no, no, I'll go back to me. We, we, yeah, people can pause. I forget YouTube. You can pause it, so you guys are gonna be able to get the key and the uh, the address pretty easily. Um, so we're gonna let Brian power up his phone, try to send some money to that address. It might be a little bit of time. Let me go. Yeah, ahead. I'm working on it, sir. So, yeah. Oh yeah. So anything else you want to talk about? I guess in chapter four. Um... Um, yeah, I mean, there's some different. Uh, you know, address formats um, that we kind of covered in the code examples. You know, the the wallet import format. Um, let's see here, you can also create um, vanity addresses. Uh, let me switch to here. We can also create vanity addresses to where you know instead of the yeah, show me the, the vanity to show you. What, you got to do a little bit of mining to get a vanity address, right? Um, it's not really necessarily mining. It's just uh, well, yeah, you gotta get that first check. three couple digits. It's basically mining. Yeah, you're right. It, it, yeah, it's mine. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. What you're yeah, not mining in the actual mining Bitcoin sense, but mining in the uh, computing sense. Um, so let's do Bitcoin vanity address generator because you're basically guessing, and guessing, and guessing. Um, yeah, you can run through a, whole uh, a number and hoping. Yep running through a whole bunch of addresses, random addresses, mind you, to hopefully get one that has a word that you uh, 
want in your address. Like for example, boat. In order to run boat through this vanity generator, um, it took about 10 seconds. Uh -huh. So not too bad on an older, pretty old yeah. CPU. And you can do, if you can do a vanity on, on bitaddress.org. So you want to show address? Yeah, yeah. Here's bitcoinvanitygen.com. Uh, go to bitaddress. All right. I don't know what this is doing. This could be mining. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you. I've done this before. Oh, cool. So do I have to generate? Generate. Yeah, I'll get generate. Okay. So I'm going to move my mouse around. Just adding some randomness to this generator. Do, 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 do. Come on, faster. Almost there. <laughs> and we're done. All right, so we've got Vanity Wallet right there. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to click, click on, on Vanity that. Wallet, and, it's, and it says, step one, generate your step one key pair, which we already did, maybe. Did I? Oh, no, here it is. Step one, public key. Hey, look. That looks like an uncompressed public key uh, because it's much longer than what we saw earlier. And then the private key is right here. That is the uh, secret. Uh, calculate your vanity wallet. Enter your part private key generated in step one and previously saved. So we want to do this private key in there. And it says enter the pool part private key from the vanity pool. Do we have a vanity pool? Copy and paste the above into your. Never mind. You can go back to the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the Vanity Pool website. What is the Vanity Pool website? I'm guessing that's a pool of computers that are participating and generating vanity addresses. All right, let's see if we can find this. Well, All right, I'm loading up your... and then the money over, guys. Oh snap! Oh snap! Twenty-one point four dollars. So you get a clean twenty out of that. It's kind of minor fees. Boom. Send it. 20 bucks has been sent to that address. If you guys are paying attention, well, it's going um, well, let's, to... Let's just let's look at that. I mean, we're not going to see it right away, but if we do yeah. blockchain.info, we should yep. be able to search for that address. So here's my oh, address. I see it. It popped, it popped in. I see it on my computer. Number of transactions, one. Total received, 0 0.00484178 BTC. So Holy that is crap. some free money. You guys know the private key. Actually, I kind of need it, so I'm going to stop this uh, video and delete it off YouTube. <laughs> Rob, we're not doing this anymore if you take that money. <laughs> Dude, for our fans. I need some gas money. <laughs> this is pretty this wild is that you're actually able to pull this up. I mean, you just sent it, you know, just, just seconds ago. I mean, it hasn't been confirmed, um, you know, obviously several times um, enough to be able to, to say, hey, this transaction's good, but... Well, it's very likely it's going to go through. I wonder if you can, like, already request to pull it out if it's not even there yet. I don't know how that works. But, you know, well, so, someone already, like, we'll see. We'll see if someone does it quick enough. One of the six well, years. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you got to either do it via command line or find a website that allows you to, you know, input right? your address so and private key. Because I don't know if I know how to pull it. Well, you're, you're not oh, necessarily God. pulling it. You're, you would have to go to, yeah, you would have to go to a wallet. You'd have to load your private. You'd have to load a wallet. I know. You use that one site. If you go back to the, your second tab. That address. And then you click on wallet details. Wallet details. Enter the private key. There Enter you go. Enter private key. There you go. Right? So, I don't know if that does it, though. Will it let you actually send from here? I, I actually... So my what whole way? I don't know. I, I'm be I'm really curious if someone can figure this out. If not, I'm sure someone can. Then I'm gonna the, the like, information gonna, there. I'm really gonna know that people don't understand this stuff because there's money in the line. Uh, I think. Anyways. I think we're definitely they're definitely gonna figure it out. Um, someone's gonna get that money. I'd say by morning. You know, just with the six yeah. viewers and all the views that we'll get. Um, if not by the end of tomorrow, I, I'm betting. I'll bet twenty dollars that it'll be gone by the end. Uh, the you bet tomorrow. twenty bucks. Okay. So if you lose, you got to put twenty more bucks to that address. Well, that means forty one's gonna. That means if people are smart, they're not gonna take it out, <laughs> and then they're gonna get twenty dollars yeah, right. more. You're right. You're right. How dumb are these guys? They keep adding twenty bucks to it. I take it back. Yeah. I I don't bet twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, 
Oh man. Well, Anyways. I think we had a good episode. Um, yeah. we're over almost an hour. Yeah. That's that's fine. Man. This is podcast style. People can watch it or not. Skip through it. Listen to it in their car, even though a lot of it's visual. These guys are idiots. Um, what the hell am I yeah. listening to? <laughs> yeah. And, and and we're learning. You know, we're we're learning and we're getting used to this, you know, podcast, video, YouTube casting. So we're not gonna be great at it. Um so please give us your suggestions, you know, in the comments. Um Is the like camera us. flipping back and forth now? I can flip it back to you if you want your face up there. There you go. You you've got the Is it all me? You got thirty seconds. Go. I I still don't see me, but it's there. No, I'm oh, there. Look, it is me. Oh God, turn it off. <laughs> Dude, what are you wearing? <laughs> Spin differently, boys. Spin nice. Differently, boys. <laughs> Holy God. Um, still, Dude, haven't got, yeah. I still haven't got someone on the street on the street going, yeah, Bitcoin. Like I'm so, you know, I wear these shirts all the time. Yet you can't and, uh, afford an iron. <laughs> anyway, flip uh, back to you. I don't, I don't iron anything anyway. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, um, I'm going to do the whole, the whole YouTube thing. Uh, press the, smash the like button. Um, so smash the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button. Do all that, you know, stuff. Yeah, I hit the down arrow if I heard that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, don't. Yeah. We should use reverse psychology. <laughs> press the um, press the dislike button, please. But um, anyways, yeah, if you like us, please share uh -huh. us and uh, – and uh, leave a comment, whatever. And uh, we'll try to put together another episode for you, um, you know, by yeah, the end of this week. Uh, yeah, we'll check five next time. Remember, guys, avoid those ICOs. Yeah. You know what? It's, all this, all these, all this stuff, I just want to put this out there. All this stuff, there might be some brilliant ideas out there, but it's too early. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I agree. It's timing, timing, timing. There's some great stuff out there. And it's just like the internet. There's a whole bunch of ideas. People, pets.com. It worked out later in time, but it didn't work out now. So I'm just, just pump the brakes on the ICOs, yeah, put it really. in Bitcoin, wait till Bitcoin gets big. That's just that's Even my trading bigger. advice. Yeah. So. No, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, there's it's a lot of early. interesting products coming out of uh, the ICOs, yeah, and the products are they, just for yeah, time. I, I mean, I'd say most of them will fail, but there will be the few gems that come out of it, just like out of most technology companies. So just think of it that way. Yeah. Just because it's riding on a new technology doesn't mean it has to ride on that new technology, and it doesn't mean it has a good team and, and all that. But that's just my own opinion. But um, anyway. Anyways. Well, guys, thanks good. for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Breaking down Bitcoin. We'll see you next yeah. time.